Godzilla is a franchise I've always liked, but my knowledge of the movies extends to big old 2014. And although you can say I'm one of the fakest fans out there, I have fond memories of the Godzilla games, particularly Godzilla Save the Earth. I remember playing the game at a friend's house when I was younger, and it was so much fun to play as these giant monsters. You had Godzilla, J Jaguar, Mothra, and Mothra Larva, the best characters. It was a blast. I love the game so much, in fact, I never bought it. But later I did buy Unleashed for the Wii, and that game was pretty fun too. I mentioned this because recently, I was trying to come up with more ideas for bad DS games, as the idea list was running low on the third episode. And my eyes were surprised to see, my favorite Kirby game is only rated 76. So sad. But after skipping to the last page, I saw it. Godzilla was bad. But not just bad, worse than March of the Penguins bad. I had to play and see just how bad this game really was. And honestly, it's not that bad of a game. It's no Kirby Superstar Ultra. But it's not worse than March of the Penguins, come on. I mean, the Wikipedia page only has one sentence for the game. They talk more about Ape and Super Ape. Rant over. Now let's start with the story. Big Purple Crystal attacks Monster Island. It lands and summons Big Bad Monster. Now Godzilla and the military are mad. Fight. The story is simplistic, but it works. I also like the game's art style. Sometimes. I mean, it looks really good for characters like Mothra, J Jaguar, Destroya. Yeah, I don't like Orca. I get that they weren't going for a realistic look, but here he is in Save the Earth, and... I just don't like this one. Gameplay. It's a side scroller beat em up. And on your journey, you'll fight small plane, big plane, ground plane, sea plane, vertical crystal, purple crystal, and sometimes an actual monster. Yeah, the enemy variety is. I'm not asking to fight Mecha Godzilla every 5 seconds, but I don't want to fight aircrafts. I already have Metal Gear Rising for that. You start off with two Kaijin, Godzilla and Mothra, each sharing one of the DS screens. The main gimmick of the game is to switch between the two with the shift of the shoulder buttons, Q and W. And it's not a bad idea, it's just that besides this lava part, you don't really need to switch that often. Take that, IGN! Who wants to play as Mothra? <laughs> have you even played Save the Earth? The levels are pretty similar whether in the air or on the ground. You fight planes, stop to do the stupid QTE, fight boss, and move on to the next one. And while the gameplay is not bad, it is pretty repetitive, and some of it is just dumb. People have their opinions on QTEs, some don't like them, and others think they're okay. I think that in some games, they're actually really great and can make you feel cool. This one doesn't. In those other games, the quick time events are quick button presses that lead to some action spectacle, whether it's ripping the arm off a of Metal Gear or punching God to the fucking sun. There may be no ripping of arms here, but don't you worry, they didn't forget the sun. Now let's move on to the combat itself. It's okay. I'll admit it took me a little while to get into the game. It doesn't really tell you how to control it. It just kind of plops you in and lets you figure it out for yourself. Which conceptually is alright, but I did get a little frustrated. I played the first few levels as Godzilla because I didn't know how to switch. And for the king of monsters... Ouch. I was getting hit by everything, so I came up with the master strategy to hide in the edge and spam fire. After I... I enjoy the game a lot more. Some of it was still dumb, like how a few of the bosses stay on the certain screen so you kind of have to wait until they move. And this crystal one-shots Mothra. Okay, you may be onto something, IGN. But I liked it. What other game can Godzilla do a high jump kick? Or this. Final level is Monster Island. You fight plane 672, QTE, Crystal, Space Godzilla. Unfortunately, this fight falls more on the dumb side. You wait till he goes to the top screen and shoot. But once you beat him, huh, I am victorious. And that's mainly it. But don't you worry, there is a post game for all the Godzilla Unleashed Double Smash post game enthusiasts out there. Here you unlock Endurance and Survival Mode. These are just story mode again. But you unlock more monsters and they're pretty fun to play with. They're admittedly not the most different with each still having the basic punch, kick, and shoot. But there are some small differences like how Baragon's special charges quicker, but he has a bad fire to make up for it, and how Batra doesn't get one shot by the crystal. Godzilla Unleashed Double Smash is not a great game, but it's not bad. Okay, DS games doesn't sound as good. Nothing will ever top the memories I have for Save the Earth, but out of all the bad DS games, I like this one a lot better than the others. There's a bunch of kaijin to unlock and try out, and as a real Godzilla fan, that's honestly fun in itself, even if the game isn't the best. I've had a soft spot for some licensed game based on my favorite franchise, and this game fits that category for me. Godzilla Unleashed Double Smash gets a not Kirby Superstar Ultra out of 10.